Oh wow. Oh, yeah, Kuala Bonnie, some of the local Ghana. So yes. it made Ghana look like a bad place yes. to go. Yes. Oh, this family member, don't go and talk to them. This family member is like. Your auntie's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> my parents are kind of like why would you want to go to ghana when you have this wonderful life in toronto when our parents left to the uk us canada they adapted why is it that when we come we find it difficult to adapt i think a lot of people come and try to make like a lot of money doing different things and i think it's, it's important to understand like we should try to we were fortunate enough and we should come back and try to apply those skills to help the greater good. Uh, what, your money finished? Like, ev like money, um, like everything that uh, will make me comfortable okay. here was done. I was at zero. My goal is to look at, okay, what skill set do I have that, you know, people in Ghana would need? If you're not patient in Ghana, you will lose everything. For instance, this door, you want it to be fixed. Don't expect that door to be fixed today. We're so used to today. Okay. In Ghana, that door that takes a day will take a whole month. <laughs> Let it be. Hello guys, my name is Cassandra and I'm here to invite each and every one of you guys to the Diaspora Transition Network. It's a network for everyone in the diaspora to join. Any issues you have with GRA, Ghana's Registers Office, Lands Commission, they are here to help support and also guide you through it all. So click the link and sign up and join today. A lot of local Ghanaians are complaining that, you know, Ghana is tough, inflation is going up, petrol is going up, everything's going up. But still, we continue to have diasporans who are moving over to Ghana. Why is this? What have they seen that us in Ghana are not seeing? Well, I have two Canadians, Ghanaians who are Canadians, who have decided that that's it. They no longer want to be in Canada. They want to live in Ghana and make sure that whatever it is that they're coming to do will work out and they will stay. So I have Abna and I have Eve's eye. You're, you're not no. Is what, have, what, what are you seeing in Ghana that other people are not seeing? The way, the truth, the light. Hey, 
Bible cry kind. And what is the what, what is the way? What is the truth? What is the light? The way is removing yourself from bondage. The truth is Africa is paradise. And the light is where God shined upon us. Wow. Abana. And it's just stress free. Really? I love it here. I've never had, I mean, I feel like I was go, go, go back in Toronto. I was just nonstop work, 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 no rest. And here it's just everyone has a relaxed attitude. So regardless, you need to assimilate and become mm -hmm. some sort of relaxed. relaxed. <laughs> you see a lot of Canadians that are moving over. What's happening in Canada? Canada doesn't have that industry in which is like inviting like the UK. Um, it's more so you have to create your own industry. Plus, um, I always f found myself in seasonal depression. Wow. I said it. I, <laughs> seasonal depression meaning like every time winter came, I was like in this box and it's like I went black. Like it's like always I would be depressed. But when I came to Ghana, there is no season for that. All seasons are the same seasons, only Hamatan, but compared to the snow, here is where I found peace. Yeah, so Canada does have that stress. For sure. And I, I was in corporate world, so I came from, you know, a very white male dominated industry. I'm an engineer, and so every time I went to work, it was the same thing over and over and over. And then, you know, I'll also add on top of it, the winters are tough. You go to work at the, in the dark, you come back in the dark, and all day it's minus 20. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I came actually during COVID, and... I didn't look back. Was there a trigger point? What was your story? What were you doing in, in Canada that made you move? I was always in the media space. I was also a retail person, so I had good customer service already. Um, I think um, what really triggered um, my movement was when I came in 2012, and I came back to visit, and that time I was here and I got the experience of Ghana, because the thing is back then, when my parents used to bring me, it used to be torture. But now when I came on my own, I'm like, oh, we have nice spots, we have nice. And that time, it was still developing. So I think in 2012, when I came, I'm like, I need to find a way to move here. But there was never, ever a chance, because we didn't have certain things in place. So I think my last time, I'm like, this is not happening, was in 2018. Okay. And I was walking outside just to go get groceries. I walk outside, there's a snowstorm, and here I have to shovel all the snow off my car. And I was literally crying. Oh my I'm goodness. like, it's like if I was in Ghana, all I have to just do is just walk out and I'm there. Yeah. So I think that breaking point where I'm like, I don't want to be shoveling, shoveling snow, I'm out. <laughs> so wow. literally I had to like, like break it down in my mind that I have to find a way to process my coming back. Wow, and yeah. that was it for me. You mentioned about your parents used to take you to Ghana when you've been bad. <coughs> and that, no, that was, that was a reality. I always yeah. got threatened. Yeah, oh wow. Oh, yeah, Kuala Bona, somebody broke on Ghana. So it made Ghana look like a bad place yes. to go. Yes, it, absolutely. And I, I had to really break that chain because what they did was they took me, obviously, in their light as punishment to like straight me out. But what they were also doing was also adding fear in which they didn't need to. Um, Cause when I came, yes, during those times, it was more of the, when they used to lash you times, when they used to beat you in school. So yes, it, it was programmed in my mind that when I'm coming back, it's punishment. I had a friend convince me, it's not like that. It has changed. You were in school then and now it's, different and so through that i was able to know the lights yes definitely so how did your parents feel when you said i'm going back to ghana to live you're crazy <laughs> like to this day i look like the crazy child i remember when i told my dad he's like ghana what are you going to look to now baby, what too? Like, you know, they, yeah. it's like stay in your comfort zone, don't go to struggle. So, my dad, to this day, I feel like even when I have conversations with him, it's more like there is not, it's not good. It hasn't treated us good. But thank God for COVID. Mm. It changed, they were here during COVID. So, the time when they were telling everyone to go back, they were here. So, luckily, they stayed for nine months. And that's when my parents also started to see the light. Oh, too. really? Yes, my dad changed his perception totally. Oh, wow. Yes. But why do you think our parents had this 
negative mindset of Ghana. Why do you think that is? Well, definitely, like, 20 years ago, <clears throat> when all of them migrated, right, it was mostly, well, my parents migrated from right. Canada, and so it was mostly like, we need to leave, we need to work hard somewhere else, start a life. And then every time they come back, they're rush, 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 mm -hmm. rush, they have, like, four weeks of holiday, they come to Ghana, they try to do everything. And so I feel like when they come back, it's frustrating because they're used to this other life. Yeah, so I just think when they, they didn't even know what to expect every time they come back. Like my parents, for example, were from Kumasi, but we have a place in Accra. And so during COVID, my dad was here, he got stuck here. And so I kind of came as well, because I'm like, let's see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then we both made the choice to stay. Really? Yeah. You and, and your dad? Yeah, and the thing is, he hasn't lived in Ghana in over 25 years, right? And so we're kind of both, and we're both from Kumasi, right? So now we're rediscovering Accra and it's, it's changed so much in the last like five, ten, ten. five, ten years. Right. Mm -hmm. I wanted to even add to what you were saying. I think our parents, what they they were the first generation to make it. If if that's how I can picture, so they went through the struggle. Like my my mom came from. She even though she was from a good background, it was still not all that great. And back then, people were. I, I would say they would bring stuff to Ghana and then the family members will do something and then they'll spend the money and it's like they're dishonest. So they had a lot of dishonest people during their times where now we have right channels, right people, right connections, but they didn't get that option. So that's why they're always, I feel like my parents, that's why they're always like, don't go bother yourself and go through that thing because they were drained by these things. Oh they had a lot of people doing things to them that even in the spiritual world, they would always say something, but mm. I think that's the reason why they didn't want us mm. to be out here. And it was always like, oh, this family member, don't go and talk to them. This family member is Your like- auntie's a witch. <laughs> she <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we all got it. What, what? I just don't understand. They just had really negative perceptions. Yes of Ghana and really try to get us to stay away from Ghana. You know the thing is, I actually understand where they're coming from because mm -hmm. I had some of ex some of those experiences okay. spiritual wise. I had those experiences, but what I believe with us is that we're not backing down because you have a spiritual issue with me. Yeah. Like we're the generation that we're breaking all those chains, you know what I mean? Yeah, mountain yeah. We're breaking it. Yeah, yeah. like we're the generation against story, like yeah. you know what I mean? So I think their generation they didn't have that like claim it manifestation yeah. You see now our generation all about manifestation. It's true. Them, they didn't get manifestation. When you're sick and someone's doing you, you're going. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? But our generation, we have the light. So hmm. I think more of us need to understand, yeah, you could have negative, but you could also make it positive. Absolutely. I mean, I always came back when I was younger, actually. My dad made a big deal of making sure that all of us came back oh, wow. every year to see our family and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I've never been, I wasn't like scared. I mean, I was threatened that I'd be sent to Ghana too, but <laughs> yeah. I wasn't as afraid. I think it's just moving as an adult. Mm. My parents are kind of like, why would you want to go to Ghana when you have this wonderful life in Toronto? Mm. And I'm just saying, like, stress yeah. is just not worth it. Yeah. And also, I... You know, we, when our parents left to the UK, US, Canada, they adapted. Why is it that when we come, we find it difficult to adapt or we don't stay to fight to make sure that we adapt to this, the, the, the system here? What, why, why do you think that is? Well, to be honest, um, I had a hard time adapting because um, even though I've come back and forth, I had, a, I had a, let's say, a a security pad. I would live with family members who were well to do with. But when I wanted to do things on my own, I felt like the reason why we did, it was very hard for us to adapt. Um, Ghanaians can really read through you as to who lives here and who isn't from here. They're genius at that. So once they see that, okay, you're not from here, they use their head in their way to try and get you. So if you also don't, let's say, respect or you don't know how have good mannerism, they will use that against you. So like here, the culture is strong. So you have to greet someone in the morning. I had to learn that from ground up again. Oh, you, you see someone walking um, in front of the store, greet them, you never know, because that person could end up being your helper. And that's the thing about Ghanaians, you have to really have that culture. And over there, we could walk my neighbor, I probably wouldn't even talk to you for a little, like I could see a neighbor for 10 years and I would never say hi. But Ghana, you have to adapt to that culture. And I feel that's what a lot of, um, let's say people have to understand. You have to respect the people. I think it's challenging when you have this idea of like simple life back in Canada and the UK and yeah. the US. You kind of know, you know, you can get your water, it's going to come. You yeah. know, the electricity is going to be on. Certain things you don't worry about. And then here it's like, okay, I have no water today. Or, oh, 
lights off, you know? And so it's e if you have that in the back of your mind, it might be challenging. But I think it's all about mindset. And a big part of it is understanding you're not in Canada, you're not in the UK, things are going to be different. And seeing the beauty in that difference is what's important. And I think that's the key because when I talk to a lot of people who are coming in and they're kind of complaining to me about the challenges, I mean, I have the same challenges. The other day I didn't have water. I'm like, I don't even know who to call. <laughs> I see all these water tanks coming on. I'm like, okay. But I think it's just mindset. Like, I'm not going to let today... Uh, like defeat me it's like we'll figure it out mm. and one key that i have too is i only allow myself to do like one big task a day for like leaving the house or going to do something right. i think before i i definitely be like, okay i'm gonna go do my nails i'm gonna go eat i'm gonna go see my aunt i'm gonna go go grocery shopping and you just set yourself up for failure so now i'm like no <laughs> I, I went to do my nails i went got groceries on the way home today was a good day <laughs> okay so breaking it up yeah right because right. the traffic yes will finish you it will, it will done you <laughs> like you won't even make it across the street yeah. and, I, and i like what you said because honestly when i first came i'm like oh i'm not doing anything like every time i schedule something it just goes off yeah. and like i feel like with ghana as you said baby steps yeah you're like literally building on a structure that never had a structure you know what yeah. i mean like over there we have structure so yeah. everything works mm -hmm. even common data card it was like a process oh, and i'm like <laughs> what is going on if i have to go for a health card we have a queue like you know what i mean but here's everyone at one space yeah. everyone not knowing what they want so i feel like we just got to take it easy with the yeah. system it'll yeah. humble you yeah <laughs> Google will humble you Absolutely. it will show you who's in charge yeah. <laughs> not having water not having electricity broadband being expensive in the middle of bathing you've got the soap all over your body you turn on the tap it's gone broadband like you've just bought 400 Ghana city like in five days six days boom it's gone does those things still affect you do you think that i can live with that like that will never deter you from moving back to canada yes um, <laughs> you know there's always a saying right like um where there's a will there's always a, a way. way so these things are always programmed in my mind you know what i mean like back then yes it would it would really affect the way i would think but i've been determined and i found ways okay so water i get it now i'll just use bucket at this point i'll go and, so I'll, I'll get some i'll pay someone to go and fetch me water or they'll go and fetch it for okay. me the broadband i just pray that <laughs> after this interview they will who your mobile <laughs> I, I don't know what's up with that okay honestly that it, in itself can be a challenge yeah. I, I really do but i feel like i'm like okay it's either you pay these broadband prices or yeah. you go back to depression yeah which is not an option for me my 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 sanity is far better than just that broadband so i figured out a way okay. there's a way of doing it cheaply where you have to like let's say just do that night time you know what i mean <laughs> if you have to upload a big file do that night time okay you know some people have good bundles and then um in terms of let's say the challenges that you face i once in september um 2021 i remember i was about to give up i oh, I, really? I legit was about to give up and say i'm out because at a point everything was finished oh my God. like finished i called like i remember at that point I what needed, your money finished like every, like money um like everything that uh, will make me comfortable okay. here was done i was at zero wow and i remember um I, I i reached out to a lot of people i know i have family members who are to do with but you know when it comes to ghana yeah. when, and when people have you know, they, you, have, you have to go and present something tangible to them. Yeah. You just can't come up to them, hi, can I? Yeah. No. So I feel like at that point, I was like, okay, maybe I should listen to everyone and, you know, go back. And I think um, I was talking to a lot of people and some people share their experiences. This is why I say sometimes it's good to share your experiences because it will make someone stronger. Yeah. So I had a few friends, I'll call them, I'm, I'll meet some of my friends and they're like, this is what we also went through so stick it through i even had a friend say stick it through like you got this you've made it like basically you've crossed the border you're almost there so why leave and i feel like that brought new light wow. and i think a week later then i got a um a contract that wow. made everything turn around for wow. me it was <laughs> i was grateful and i'm like all this 
is you have to be spiritually ready for this game. Wow. Yeah. Like, it's tough. Yeah, I find like, you know, the challenges are there. And at first I was just like, I'd wake up and like, okay, no lights, no hot water. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You know, and I take a deep breath and I take it day by day. So I was actually doing renovations on my house. So okay. that was like a whole other experience. I could write a book about it. So, you know, having to watch people while they're working, I'm like, okay, this is new. This is a bit of a waste of time, mm. but okay, we're doing that. And then small, like small, small, I, I made it happen. So with the water, like I'm like, okay, there's water trucks. I called a few people that I knew. I'm like, so what do you do when there's no water? Okay, some people come. Oh, you could get a borehole. Oh, wow, what's that? Figuring it out, doing that. And then, you know, I saved up and got a generator. So I'm like, okay, now when the light's off, at least I have some sort of backup because I have to work. Um, and I think just taking it little by little yeah. and not trying to be, I don't know, I just take a deep breath every day and I'm like, okay, let's make it work. And it helps with adversity. Come on, right. if you can make it here, it's a big change. It's a big, it's yes. a big, big Like it's a change. blessing yeah. to make it out here. Like, honestly, Ghana is in a, in, a, in a position where once you go through that hurdles, like once you go zero, you're really coming up like a hundred. Like it's really one of those where it's like literally zero to a hundred wow. and it stays there like it doesn't come back down like i thought maybe when you go through the struggle you know another struggle will come but no once you make it you understand the system you save according to the system because i i feel like i was still programmed to live like i was over there yeah and and my parents were giving me warning and when, once parents see that they're like okay it's time to get back home you know yeah. Yeah, go back. but once you learn the system and you adapt to the system instead of you spending yeah it's adapting it's adapting like instead of you spending a thousand cities a day you can literally spend 200 100 yeah. and manage that yeah. was that was the difficulties I was having I didn't have good management I stopped converting to Canadian dollars okay. that helped yes. me a lot okay. <laughs> yes when you're looking okay compared yeah, to like, okay, it's, that's not cheap. it's like no it's yeah. expensive yeah. <laughs> for people that are like thinking of coming that are still like I want to be comfortable where I am what would you say to them everyone's battles is different um, I would say the first thing you should do is research. A lot of people just come into Ghana thinking that it's going to work just the way it was when they were home. You can't bring a system that is, let's say, worked on other structures and try to bring the same thing here in Ghana. Ghana is a whole different thing. You have to be patient. The is patience. If you're not patient in Ghana, you will lose everything. Let's say, for instance, this door you want it to be fixed, don't expect that door to be fixed today. Mm. We're so used to today. Okay. In Ghana, that door that takes a day will take a whole month. <laughs> let it be. <laughs> Do not try and change a thing that, let it be built. Yeah. And when it's done, you'll be happy. Yeah. And don't I go and pay to make it like quicker than it is. Yeah. You will lose your money. <laughs> That's all. And I would say the comforts <laughs> change, right? Like what you are, what you get when you're here is like, my perspective on life changed, what I felt like I needed changed, and you know, being able to go to work, being able to go see people that look like me, being able to not feel like I'm the only black person in a room, like for me, that's an invaluable experience in Ghana. And I can't describe kind of, you just feel at ease, you feel at home, and all those things just made me feel so much more comfortable. So it's like, okay, if there's no water today, like I know I can get it, I know it can come. And for me, that was just like the main. Okay. So Abna, if I was to take your passport from you, your Canadian passport, mm -hmm. would you still stay? Yeah. I think I'm learning about, so my dad is from Ghana, my mom is Canadian, and so I was coming here and my dad always made it important for us to know where we're from. And I think in Canada, you know, when people ask you where you're from, I always say, oh, I'm from Ghana, right? And then you come here and they're like, oh, Abroni. I'm like, no, not exactly. <laughs> like, I'm trying and I want to learn more and I want to learn everything about the rich culture that's yeah. here. And one of the big things too is not even just traveling Ghana, but also traveling Africa and, you know, trying to change the norm. Like, it's not just we need to go to Europe every day for holiday. Right. It's like, let's go to South Africa. Let's yeah. go to Namibia. Let's see, like, show the world kind of the beauty of Africa. Yeah. And so for me, I'm, I'm here to stay. Yeah. If there was an emergency hospital wise, yeah. would you still stay and go to the Ghanaian hospital or would you fly yourself out? I'll fly myself to a different African um, country that specializes in this. Honestly, I feel like Africa, we need to promote other African countries that offer good services. I believe there has to be a part in Africa that would have good health care. I know where I'm from is free health care. That's, that's something that I believe 
Africans to also like work on if if honestly to be honest if someone took my passport what I'll end up doing is start making calls to different nations that have good let's say doctors who would probably want to come to Ghana or anywhere in Africa because right now the movement is strong everybody wants to come back and I think eventually two to three years from now doctors will be moving in right. so I don't think we need to move to them we need to make them move in and how we could do that is make this place a better place mm -hmm. and doctors will be flying in opening hospitals it's, it's a matter of time mm -hmm. so I think if you took my passport away I would be the first person to be on the internet who are the good doctors can you please like you know okay. like, so yes I'm ready for it I'm ready for anything wow. that is thrown at me in wow. Ghana okay <laughs> so in Ghana where do you go shopping where's a good place for people that have come in for the first time because obviously sometimes you do compare the price and you're just like <gasps> this price i would get it probably cheaper yeah. in canada where's a good place i i go to many different places and i'm still trying to figure it out every time i go grocery shopping i'm like i have to look at the price because it could literally be triple so yeah. that's the first thing i take advantage I, I take note of and i've been going to like my local like market finding some vegetables there i don't buy grocery uh, I don't buy uh, vegetables at like the Palace Mall or anything like that. And then all these little shops that are opening up, I see them and they have quite a bit of things. So that's where I go. Mm -hmm. But I, it honestly changes because sometimes I'm at the mall. Sometimes I see the shop. And the thing is with Ghana is that you don't walk places, right? So you don't just discover them. It's like I'm going to this place and on the way you might see something. I turn right away. I go check it out and yeah. see it that I write it on my notes to be like, OK, I come back here next mm -hmm. time. But I'm still kind of discovering my go to's all of that where do you go it depends on which area i'm at because i find myself i do end up going to let's say makola side and um so you go to makola oh, you go yes. to this oh, yes <laughs> yeah i go i go <laughs> okay i walk <laughs> <laughs> yes i go to makola i go to like the art center okay. which is really has a lot of stuff that i like like let's say outfit wise um for food wise i feel like um if 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 you want to keep a good budget you can go to like your area market every single area has a market like a little small market and i find that it's pretty affordable and luckily my area there's this cold store there's this everything so it's all within the area so i don't have to leave so i think the best place is to do research in your area to find your local markets and if you want outfits then just let's say journey into makola all those other extended markets around there so that's where i find my stuff yeah you watched Ivy's show, right? <clears throat> and Sister Ivy, thank you for coming for us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, you know, we touched on, um, we, we spoke about relationships in Ghana. You watched the video, right? Yes. Did you guys face the same thing or is it a bit different for you? It's not different. I was watching, I was like, yes, girls, tell them, let them know. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a challenge here, but I wouldn't say it's all unique to Ghana, but I think what I have found was unique to Ghana or something that I haven't experienced yet would be like the entitlement that some people have when it comes to dating, like mostly men. And that's been a bit challenging to kind of understand. But I think for me, it's kind of just taking my time and kind of understanding things before I get into anything. Uh, but definitely a challenge. It's just a different mindset, I think. Mm. And so understanding that has been a bit challenging. So has that been the local Ghanaians or have you dated Canadian Ghanaians here? So there's a lot of diaspora who are here and I think everyone goes to the same thing so you see them out but I have I have like hung out with some local Ghanaians who maybe went away to a school or came okay. back and stuff like that and still though the mindset is a little bit different and I think with ages it mm. makes a huge difference if they're like 30 or if they're like 40 there's a huge difference with mindset so I found that a bit challenging. Mm. Right. Madame. Hmm. <laughs> so the thing about me, fortunately, I've dated all three categories. Rich, okay, broke. <laughs> I've dated Sika, are you okay? And yeah. Like, <laughs> like I've dated all categories. <laughs> and one thing I realize is um the culture is a part of the reason why we have a lot of men, um, let's say entitled to what they're doing. They make it okay. And because I have an understanding of how it works, because my grandfather had over 90 kids. Hey. Wow. So it's a polygamous background wow. for my uncle, sorry, my grandpa and my uncles. And you know, I, I, I grew up from a background that has it. Fortunately, my dad is only one, one woman wow. to one woman, which is great. So I think um, what it taught me was 
um, it's either you learn the culture or you're gonna still end up with broken heart. Cause wow. I've, I've had most of these categories having wives or something. So I had to really take my time and understand oh, yeah. the culture. So it's e like, I would say the first things first, first love yourself. Love is beautiful, but the inner love within you will make you understand certain things because out here is different mm -hmm. and it's, it's entitlement. So it's either they're from, let's say, outside, they were raised outside, coming to Ghana, or else you have to kind of, yeah. it's, it's a normal thing in their culture. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. it's one I of those. <laughs> Not, not, not okay for me. <laughs> it's, it's not okay for me either. Yeah, it's not okay for me. Me, I know my my future. Yeah. Whoever is my husband will love me for who I am. That he will forget about all the women behind him. You forget. I'll make you forget. Are you sure? <laughs> I said I will make you forget. <laughs> I'll try my best and make you forget. Okay. Like, I know who I am. So I yeah. feel like once we establish that and we make it clear. Do you want polygamy or do you want, you know, just yeah. us? So I think we have to establish that first. Because I feel like. Ghana men, too, they like communication. Yeah. Like, okay, why worry? Don't worry. What's your in the future? Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. Be a can one. I feel like a lot of women don't do that. I don't. I don't feel like mm. they have that, that communication. Okay. There's, I think it's an uncomfortable co conversation, so they don't ask. So don't yeah. be surprised when it comes. Yeah. Ask right. questions, and then I think in Ghana or in Accra, at least, it's very small. So like a lot of people know everybody. So if you're a new person coming in, it's like, oh. Here's this new person, you know, people get excited. Right. And I think just understanding like, okay, it's a small place, mm -hmm. figure out what you're gonna get into before you do, mm -hmm. understand the culture, it's different. Very different. Mm -hmm. Before you get involved. Before you yeah. get involved. Before you get yeah. involved. Yeah. 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 Okay, so as diasporans, what impact do you think that we can make in Ghana? What's our impact? What are we here to do? So I think, you know, a lot of people have been fortunate enough to get education otherwise and learn different skills, understand different cultures. And I think we have a lot of skills that are very unique. And if we can bring that back to Ghana and apply those skills here, that's something that's needed. And like for me, I'm an engineer and I work on transit projects. That's what I did in Toronto. And when you come to Ghana, you're like, okay, like Ghana, Accra would benefit from a proper transit okay. system, right? The Trotros, it's not working anymore, right? We're growing at a rapid pace. Yeah. And so my goal is to look at, okay, what skill set do I have that, you know, people in Ghana would need, the Ghanaian government might, might need, and how can I apply to make an impact? I think a lot of people come and try to make like a lot of money doing different things, and I think it's, it's important to understand like we should try to, we were fortunate enough and we should come back and try to apply those skills to help the greater good, not just like the 1%. Sure. I think we need to bring more people in who will train our people to um, believe in themselves. Ghanaians most of the Ghanaians I've met, the confidence level yeah. isn't there. Once we give our people confidence that you can be who you want to be, that will change the whole system. And confidence and identity, because mm. too much of our people believe foreign is great. We must give these people identity to know who they are and like believe in themselves. Absolutely, I, I totally job. agree. I think the, the, the foreign thing is, I still have not got over that. The yeah. need or want to get things that are not from Ghana or not made in Ghana, it's yeah. really challenging. So I think if one thing too, helping to you know, enlighten people to yeah. understand that no, like this is the place, everyone wants to be here. Yeah. So like, let's make it here, well, keep yeah. it here. Region, right? yeah. So I feel like Ashanti people, um, I'm not categorizing, but I feel like when I go there, there's a sort, sort of like, they, they believe in, like, I want to explain, that's it, meaning they're me, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like we need more of that. Yeah. I feel we need to, like, stop, like, you know, wear your African wear, mm. you know, wear your culture, you know, it's beautiful. Even an African woman just walking outside, she's just naturally beautiful. And yeah. I feel like we need to make them understand mm. how you are is just right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. What are you both currently doing in Ghana? So what are you doing now, Eve? Okay, so I have a, um, I'm a media personality, yeah. and also, um, I also specialize in multimedia. Okay. So I have a production company. Fantastic. Yes, and and um, we do coverages for all kinds of events um, here and also Canada. So I have a team here and I have a team in Canada. Oh, brilliant. Yes, yeah, so okay. that's what I'm working on. And also, um, I want to start doing events as well. So I'm trying to do something in the Ashanti region. Right. So that our people, you know, they'll yeah. take a corner. So, yeah. you know, you know <laughs> the Americans, yeah. <laughs> you know, something for us. Okay. I haven't really seen that here. So, you know, something along the lines okay. of events. 
and media. And media. Yeah. Fantastic. Madam Engineer, what are you doing? <laughs> so I also have a nonprofit organization based in Canada. Okay. Um, it's called Aspire for Hire. And we use sports as a vehicle to support and empower youth. Oh, so across, brilliant. and we do a lot of different programs specifically for black males mm -hmm. across Toronto. So I support my team from here remotely for now. And we have quite a few projects with the Canadian government. So I'm really happy and I feel really empowered by that work. Mm -hmm. um, but it really, what I do want to do is bring some of that work here and try to help uh, use sport to empower and educate youth, especially girls in Ghana. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur, so I have uh, a building project going on in Kumasi. So I'm oh, trying brilliant. to, yeah, well, housing, or? Uh, yeah, housing for students. Oh, brilliant. yeah. So I'm getting that going, and I'm really excited about that. I'm learning a lot along mm. the way. And then I just started a YouTube channel, so yeah. I'm basically showing everyone Ghana and traveling Africa. So I'm going. I told myself I'm not going to Europe this year. I'm only going wow. within Africa. So. Wow. That's that amazing. That it's nice to. that you guys are trying to do stuff in Kumasi as well. Because yeah. I feel like everything is based around it's the crowd. There's yeah. a movement that's why you need to come to I'm Kumasi. I'm joining that movement. Come. Like, we want you there. Like, you uh, know? <laughs> okay, so last questions. Okay. Fufu Ana Benku. That's a hard one. That, that, that's oh, a hard one. Like, both of them. One. Yeah. Fufu, because I'm a shanty. <laughs> <laughs> Fufu. Madam. Thank you. Ben Why you got to choose Ben I'm sorry. It's just, you know, it does it. does the job. It's my favorite thing. I have it every Sunday. Okay. Jalofo Wachi. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. I'm waiting on you. Mm, watch it. Watch it. Jollof. 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 With the meats inside, beef inside. Yeah, I like okay. jollof. Okay. Cocoa and beans or fried yam and e tilapia? Easy. Cocoa and beans. Mm. Red, red. <laughs> fried yam. Fried yam. Yeah, okay. Tilapia. All right. So last advice that you would give somebody in the diaspora who wants to move but is scared, is thinking it's not going to work. My sister came. It didn't work for her. Why is it going to work for me? What advice are you giving to that person? So I have two. My okay. first one is for those who their parents are from here. Please, I love your parents and all, but you have to do what is best for you. Um, Africa is not a graveyard for people to come and retire. Africa is paradise. And if you get here now and you build now, in the future, just like how Dubai was built on a desert, Ghana is about to be the biggest biggest thing worldwide so get here early so you don't say i wish i invested mm. that word should not be a part of your voice if wow. you're watching now and for those um who have never come to the motherland i believe before you come please pay a visit to do your research to do your calculations numbers matter in ghana everything mm. is calculated here so that's my advice to you mm. wow nice my advice would be, I mean, if you're Ghanaian and you have, you're fortunate enough to have parents who came from Ghana and anywhere else, I would say you should come back and see where they all came from, see where it all started from, because it's incredible. It's incredible for your parents to have come and made it elsewhere, come back. And I think it's extremely important for us to know where we're from. And I think, yeah, it's important to believe in yourself, understand there's going to be challenges and kind of be open to different, like be open to a new mindset because there's so much beauty in Ghana. And if you just have this Western, oh, I want this, I want that, you'll quickly be like, I'm done. I'm yeah. packing up my bags. But I think if you just have faith in yourself, believe in yourself, and you have a different mindset, anything's possible. Faith, believe in yourself, and come now. Not in 20 years time, because in 20 years time, Ghana will be built like Dubai. Because you don't want to miss out. Ghana is not a place where you come to retire. Ghana is paradise. These are the words from Abna and Eve's eye coming to tell you that this Ghana is the place to be. I hope you've enjoyed the show and I'll see you next week. Stay blessed.